Malt master David C. Stewart, MBE, has presided over the handcrafting of the Balvenie Scotch whisky for 60 years. In that time, he's married time-honoured techniques passed from generation to generation, with a spirit of experimentation resulting in some of the world's most loved single malt whiskies. Here's more from their distillery in Scotland. Here in the heart of Speyside, the pinnacle of craftsmanship is what has sustained the immense global reputation of the Balvenie Scotch Whisky by William Grant and Sons. Tradition has underpinned its excellence here for over 130 years. Highly skilled craftsmen work the malting floors, one of only a handful left in Scotland, all ready for expert coppersmiths and coopers producing and maintaining their own casks to complete this age-old process to produce the rich, honey-smooth flavour of the Balvenie whisky. And the man ensuring that quality stays consistent is David Stewart, MBE, the industry's longest serving malt master. He joined the business 60 years ago as an office clerk and was offered training in the sample room under his predecessor, Hamish Robertson. Hamish was bringing in cast samples from, from American oak barrels at different ages, bringing in samples from Spanish oak casts at different ages, showing me the difference between American oak and Spanish oak and then also showing me how whisky changed as it got older, how it evolved. So, so he was showing me things you know, just to help me, help my knowledge and he was, he was explaining you know, what I should be nosing. Three different expressions of the famous The Balvenie Classic were launched in 1983, the result of David's innovative cask finishing technique, which had a huge impact on the whisky industry. It's a case of just finishing for a period in a different cast type to subtly change the, 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 the flavours of the whisky. So now the whole Scotch whisky industry is using cast finishes, the whole world, the bourbon industry, the Japanese industry, Canadian, you know, Australia, all, all over the world, people are putting their whisky into different cast types, white wine, red wines, Madeira, Port, Sherry, you know, you name it, uh, they're doing it. With only a decade separating the Queen's years of service from his own, in 2016, David received an MBE, a very important moment prompting thoughts of reflection and succession. Two years later, Kelsey McKechnie became his apprentice maltmaster. A master's degree in brewing and distilling, married with her excellent work in the Balvenie laboratories, saw her perfectly placed to deliver her first successful creation, a stunning combination of the Balvenie's rich heritage and experimentation. The sweet toast of American oak was really born out of that innovative spirit that David has that's passed on. And so we wanted to do something a little bit different with our 12-year-old spirit. We'd taken virgin American oak casts and really, really toasted them so we could pull out as much of the flavour as we could to then transfer it into Bovenny spirit. So it's a lovely balance between everything that cask can offer and that beautiful distillery style at Bovenny. And so actually all of the skills that I've learned and the things that I use to create Bovenny spirit day in, day out, decades before me, David had actually been the one to pioneer, so it's been fantastic and his nature and his demeanour makes it really easy to learn from. A decade of experience working with the distillery has now earned this man the title of Global Ambassador, which means he shares his intimate knowledge of the Balvenie as well as the many stories behind new releases. He speaks to trade customers and ardent collectors worldwide, many of whom like to travel to visit the distillery. In particular, when they come here and see that, they see the, the raw kind of craft that's put into creating our whiskey and the traditional aspects that we employ make it very real and it's made by heart. And Charles marvels at what David has experienced during his 60 years with the Balvenie. When he started, there would have been stock from the 50s available in the warehouses and he knows that you know, from the 50s, 60s, 70s, going all the way through to the present day. And to have all of that information mapped out in his mind, in flavour, is, is incredible. 
During David's time here at the distillery, he's overseen almost 100 different variations of Balvenie. And people who come to the visitor centre here can get a glimpse of some of their most famous historic creations and some of the current ones. Fans love the award-winning classics and the new variations, but what next for the Balvenie? We've got quite a number of, of releases in the pipeline and uh, so Kelsey, she's obviously looking at uh, what, what the future may hold and I've got every confidence in Kelsey that you know, things will, will carry on. Scotland is incredibly important to the Queen. Hugo Vickers, Royal Expert, what do you think Scotland means to her? The Queen has always loved Scotland and of course what basically Scotland means is summer holiday time. When she was moving around a lot, um, when she was a bit younger, of course she didn't stay in the same bed for very, very long. But of course at Balmoral she could be in the same bed for weeks on end. Also taking the children out, teaching them how to ride on ponies, the grouse moors, all that terribly important. And it's interesting about the Queen that you know, she'd never sort of taken a holiday abroad. It's always straight to Scotland, the beginning of August, and then down again, slightly reluctantly, in October. So very much off-duty time for the Queen up in Scotland. And talking about the castles, how does Balmoral compare to Windsor Castle here? Well, Balmoral is very Queen Victoria and very sort of tartany, obviously, and very, very Scottish. Um, I think, of course, you say off-duty, but of course the Queen still is doing her boxes every day. She has the Prime Minister to stay up there. But Windsor is fantastic. I think Windsor is probably her favourite home of all of them. I mean, she did say to Harold Nicholson in 1953 that she would like to live in Windsor. And the reason for that was because all her childhood memories of the, being here in the wartime uh, were Windsor, really. And what about the people who live and work here at Windsor Castle? What's her rapport <coughs> like with them? When the Queen goes to church on a Sunday, she will find out what's happening to all the estate workers. She will know who's having babies and who's not so well. Um, she is, you could say it's a little bit feudal perhaps, but she takes a great personal interest in them. One of the many ways in which she keeps herself grounded. Hugo Vickers, Royal Expert on Scotland and what it means to the Queen. Thank you.